Thanks, Dr. Calfano, and uh, thanks all for having us here. Um, my name is David. Uh, I'm a very recent graduate of the medical school and a soon-to-be graduate of the public health school here. Um, I'm joined by Sarah. Hi, all. My name is Sarah. I'm currently an MD, MBA student at PNS and also the Columbia Business School. So uh, we have helped to uh, work to start and run uh, this organization of, of students called the COVID-19 Student Service Corps that is really a student-faculty collaboration across the medical center um, to support uh, service learning and volunteer projects um, to address healthcare needs. Um, just to give a brief timeline of sort of the student experience leading up to the pandemic, um, in early March as the first couple of cases trickled in, the first things that happened for students was that the student-run free clinics were closed. Uh, about a few days later on March 8th, um, the classes turned to virtual. Um, so students who were in classes uh, at all years at all schools in the medical center uh, had a, a change. Um, and we saw the writing on the wall and officially on March 15th, uh, students were pulled from clinical rotations. So the build up to this, there was some discussions about how could students be involved in a COVID response? And it really took a head on March 15th um, when some students and faculty got together and, and we put our heads together to think about what are the needs and how could students address them? Uh, and this led to the formation of our COVID-19 Student Service Corps on officially launching on March 18th. Um, part of what we did in designing the Student Service Corps was very intentionally design a structure that could be replicated um, that would allow for a layered leadership model and a specific mission with guiding principles on how we would run uh, to address specific needs in the most efficient and effective way possible. Our mission is really to support the healthcare system uh, and healthcare system identified needs, including not just hospitals, but also the workforce, patients, and communities to use an interprofessional model to do so um, and service learning projects. We follow this structure where needs are identified by the healthcare system and the community. Um, rather than trying to think through what people may need, um, we try and put feelers out and hear from people who are on the front lines, who are in the communities, who are patients, um, who are providers, uh, about ways that students could help. Uh, these needs get filtered down through our oversight committee, um, which then decides on how we can form this project. Faculty and students collaborate together uh, in order to create project structures that would be able to address this, lead, this need, um, which then work with student coordinators and ultimately the volunteers um, to create this project. We also have a, a number of guiding principles that I think are really important to how our model runs. As I mentioned, the healthcare system is what determines our needs. Um, and we use this service learning model, which I'll speak to in a minute. Student and faculty co-leadership is very key. Um, we are very thankful that uh, Sarah and I are, are incredibly well supported and guided by a group of faculty mentors, um, Marina Catalazzi, Ermi Desai, Stephanie Grillo, uh, and Yoni Amiel, um, that we span faculty mentorship uh, throughout the medical center and the CUIMC schools and programs, um, and that faculty and student uh, collaboration really is what drives a lot of these projects forward. Um, it'll, it gives multiple perspectives, it gives support from the medical center, and it really helps lend ideas to what is happening um, on the ground and how students can be involved safely um, and effectively. The interprofessional aspects is also a very key component of what we do. Um, uh, Sarah will go through the, the schools and programs that we have here at the medical center, which are involved in all of our um, activities. Uh, but to be able to blend teams together of medical students, public health, occupational therapy, nursing, um, uh, and social work, really any number of, of schools um, where students have professional expertise that's um, wide ranging um, and, and really just different life and professional experiences that can work together. And lastly, uh, one of our other guiding principles is that um, whenever possible, these, uh, these opportunities are remote for students, uh, which allows for the most engagement uh, that we could have uh, across um, the campuses as many students are no longer in New York City, but also to do so safely um, while thinking through infection control and risk um, and limiting the amount of exposure uh, within the hospital system. So the service learning model is also very key to what we do. Um, it's this idea that as students enter into engagement, um, their engagement itself and their ability to reflect on that affects their professional and personal development. Uh, we had our first reflection question this week, which was posed on our discussion boards, students engaged um, to answer the question, how are you responding to the pandemic so far in terms of what you feel you can and cannot control? And we find this to be a very key linchpin to really all that we do, um, particularly as students have been pulled from their normal 
uh, curricular environments to allow for an opportunity to continue professional development um, to uh, engage with social determinants of health and healthcare systems. Now, given that David just described the infrastructure that CSSC is built upon, I have the wonderful privilege of sharing what we've managed to accomplish in a little over a month. So in the last month, we've had more than 1600 students at Columbia alone sign up to volunteer with our organization. There are currently 12 Columbia schools, predominantly CUIMC, but we, are, we do have partnerships with engineering. We've now transformed into a national organization. So we have six other CSSC chapters. And the toolkit that was just described has actually been one of the hallmark features of this organization. And we've managed to share with more than 30 institutions across the globe to help them develop the infrastructure to create this service learning organization in response to the COVID pandemic. As David mentioned, we addressed all the healthcare systems needs, not only of the system, but also providers, patients, and the community. The way we bucket our projects are in the, these three categories. So patient and system facing, staff and student facing, and then the community focused. And these are just a couple of projects that we have currently ongoing. Uh, we have, I believe, more than 20 at this point. But as Dr. Angela Mills noted earlier, the community hotline, so New York Presbyterian's community hotline, was initially run by PAs. Within one week, it was completely turned over to medical students and NP students, and we're receiving about more than 1,100 calls per day. And as a result, hopefully, there's been less people going to the ED um, under the clinical, under the guidance of clinical guidelines that we provide. In addition, we have Hero Meals, which has raised more than $250,000 and delivered more than 10,000 meals to frontline workers across the 10 NYP hospitals. We have telemedicine, so we've managed to follow more than 500 patients with COVID and ensured that they were not experiencing symptoms or needed any clinical health to really make sure those patients who are being discharged much earlier than normal aren't falling through the cracks. And we have workforce health safety where we managed to reduce the average wait time from 45 minutes to less than 100 seconds in our first week. Interprofessionalism is um, one of the pillars of this organization. And as you can see, we have a wide range of involvement from a diverse array of CUIMC programs, including the medical school, GSAS, CDM, we have nursing, social work, you name it. And we make sure to have the most diverse array of students in every project. So students really do understand what it means to work in an interprofessional team. Please feel free to reach out to us if you have any questions or if you could use the help of students. We've had tons of clinicians approach us with ideas and we've been able to deploy students to assist with their needs. So please, again, feel free to reach out. And thank you guys so much. And uh, at this website here is actually a project request form. Um, you could fill that out and we can get back to you on how students could address a need. Um, you can also send an email to cssc at cumc.columbia.edu. Um, and just a, a thanks again to our, our faculty chairs um, who are listed here, um, but also to our, our faculty and student leaders and all of the students who have volunteered um, on these projects. It's been really an amazing thing to be a part of. David and Sarah, thank you very much for this presentation. I would uh, um, ask that you post these relevant uh, uh, addresses uh, to the chat box uh, um, and perhaps uh, as well on the main pay front page of the COVID-19 symposium so people will know how to contact uh, uh, you. Um, are there any questions? Margaret? Yes, thank you all so much for the, for the work that you're doing. Um, have you given any thought to reaching out um, you know, I noticed that you've reached out globally um, or so, but have you given any thought to reaching out to other regions of the country? So, for example, um, your um, peers that are in southern states or in midwestern states or in some of these other uh, some of these other areas. Yeah, so uh, it's a great question. Um, we are developing partnerships. Uh, on a more formal level of, of creating these chapters of the Student Service Corps 
Um, we have a pretty close partnership with the University of Washington, um, as well as the University of Richmond, uh, University of Virginia, um, University of North Carolina, uh, I believe one more, which I'm, uh, George Mason University. Um, and in, in addition to that, we've also been in discussion, like chatting um, more informally with a number of other uh, schools and programs, many in New York City, but also outside um, in Boston. Um, we haven't done so much outreach per se to other schools, um, so much as, as having <clears throat> our information sort of publicly available. Um, but one of our, our medium term goals, shall we say, is to continue to engage um, with uh, medical centers and public health schools um, throughout the country and, and sort of uh, share this model and experiences um, and collaborate together on a, like a national student response. Okay, I don't see any additional um, uh, questions, but I again wanted to thank uh, not only David and, and Sarah, but uh, the entire team of people they represent for the amazing work they've done. Um, never under uh, value the power of uh, students uh, who are at home and not being able to get into the lab. 